Well, guys, congratulations on getting your first film to Fright Fest. So it's, it's a nice, uh, delightful little, <laughs> little movie that you've made. It's yeah. a nice, cheery little effort. It, it's, I pitched it to Brian as a love story, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, and there's a tender love scene in there for you, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, i got to do it once I read it. Yeah, so it's always important to kind of explore the. No, it's yeah, it's a violent, violent, dark, violent psychological horror film, isn't it? So yeah. it's quite visceral. It is a bit, yeah. It's yeah. pretty, it's pretty challenging. Yeah. I mean, what what made you choose that as your as your first feature film? Uh, I I, you know, I, I just love horror films, and I, I wanted to make something. You know, it, it was before I'd seen a lot of films this genre that actually they all come out kind of around the same time as we actually finished making. It. And I was trying to do something a little bit different with it. Um, I just wanted to explore the, the, the difference, the juxtaposition between the worst of what mankind can do to man and then actual, an actual horror thing. Because in a lot of horror films, it's usually just one or the other. Mm -hmm. It's about a, kind of a, you know, a man who's a slasher trying to kill everybody or a murderer, or it's about an actual horror creature, supernatural creature. So I wanted to kind of see, explore the differences between the two, as in what, what is actually worse. Right. Supernatural or man itself. And it just kind of seemed like an interesting idea. Absolutely. I mean, you cover all kinds of different sort of horror genres. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you've got your found footage, you've got yeah. kind of torture, survival. Torture, thing. survival. <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing going on. I mean, were there particular touch points for you, particular films that you were sort of influenced by? And you're like, okay, I want to try something like that or something? Yeah, well, well I always loved, I've, I've loved Wreck. When I first saw Wreck, I thought it was brilliant. Um, and obviously we, did, we didn't quite have some of the budget to do some of the stuff that I would have liked to do. But I think, um, you know, I, I find that w w with horror films, I think you draw an awful lot. There's a bit of drama in it as well, which I want to try and, try and bring in. And, I, I, and there's a lot, kind of a thriller aspect. And I don't think that a horror film would just always just be based on drawn from horror films. I'm trying, mm -hmm. I'm trying to see, can you take from other films as well, kind of more dramatic elements of it. Um, and it was something that just kind of evolved as you did it. A lot of it was... You know, it was kind of a, a, mm. an improvised situation <clears throat> following beats of A to B to C. So we knew where we were going, but we shot it all sequentially mm -hmm. and then tried to explore what was going to happen from an acting point of view and let the acting take it to a large extent. Yeah, I mean, so that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I mean, it, it feels sort of uh, largely improvised. Mm. It feels like you were quite sort of, the script was quite loose. I mean, Brian, do you want to talk mm. about sort of what Owen's um, method was? When directing you and, and you know, and, yeah. and the, the script and how it was sold to you as an idea? How it was sold to me as an idea? Well, I, I, he's a very talented guy, uh, writer, director, actor, DLP. Oh, yeah, huh? nice. <laughs> that check. What else did you say? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, yeah, any opportunity I get to work with on, I'll snap at it. He sent me the script, he explained to me how it was going to be, and um, absolute mayhem. And uh, as an actor working in film or TV, you never get the chance to do a 12 minute scene. It mm -hmm. just doesn't happen, you know? So it was just so intense and full on. And I could see it in my head when I was reading it, it was just manic and mayhem. And I said, yeah, yeah, we can do this. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, how much of the dialogue was, was already written out? I'd say about 50 50. Really yeah, 50 -50. we stuck to it, not rigidly, no, you know, no. but the improv bits are, are, are terrific, innit? But it's, it was great freedom. It was, it was there more as a, as a framework because I mean the, the, to, be, to me to be honest the film actually originally evolved from this idea of these homeless guys attacking these girls and then a creature coming from the insanity of the you know when you got this n terrible negative energy and then this creature kind of arrives mm -hmm. because it's drawn by this negative energy so that was where the film originally originated from so I really want to explore working with eight or nine actors which is what we have in, in a scene for like 25 minutes and explore the idea of just, just being able to let people act and then see where it goes. So it basically followed, we had beat patterns and beat points at the hit, and this is where this needs to go, and this is where this needs to go, this is where this needs to go. But within these, these moments, people can do stuff. And it meant that because you never, never knew where the camera, and the reason why it had to be um, found footage was because to allow everybody to act and find things, if you shot it conventionally, it's going to become more rigid and it wouldn't have got that viscerality between the acting. It wouldn't mm. allow people to explore it as much. I know Dollhouse has done something similar with Curse and Sheridan, but it's still mm. a bit more rigid. And it, it meant that people who are, are off camera are still exploring their own little kind of, their own little moments. And then you go back and you find them for a few seconds and like some of the acting from Vanessa and the girls and stuff is wonderful. Mm. And they're off camera for three or four minutes and you find them again. And, and that's they're still acting away yeah. in the background. Yeah, and, yeah. and it gave, when, when we shot it, we did all that section in one day, and it was this incredible energy, whereby it was all very, very real, and it was just, it just felt, and that was, 
that for me was a, is a centerpiece of the film. It was trying to explore that and, and then see, allow the acting to take it through. Mm -hmm. and that's kind of what I wanted with it. As we're talking about horror films and trying to explore different techniques of drama and so forth, as opposed to making about this is now about a scare, this is now about this. The film for me is about the acting. So the horror and so forth works because you know the girls are genuinely scared, but they're all properly in it. And sure. that's why it works. And yeah, the acting's brilliant. Mm -hmm. So, so was it was it a long rehearsal process, or did you did you have the cameras there pretty early on in in? Uh, um, did I give you any rehearsal? No, we did it. We did a like a rehearsal, a blocking rehearsal, and just I, I think we only did two takes. Yeah, of wow. Each scene because it was just so intense and full on, and it, I mean the girls had to go to terrible places in their own heads, and the guys as well, and it was just really. I don't think we could. You couldn't do any more than two. You couldn't. It's just too much. Yeah, it's just too exhaust. It looks exhausting. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, everyone's yeah. knackered, and all, there's there's a point you have to reach when everyone's kind of in these places in their heads where you can't go too far before it becomes a snuff movie. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you can't get too bad. Ah, okay, yeah. okay. Can so, we recast it? <laughs> I mean, how how important was that to to maintain a um, sort of a, a, a light mood on set, sort of between? It wasn't things. a light mood. I know, I know. There was. I mean, it's kind of was it. Uncut it was, yeah, but it was uncut. Everyone's running, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Oh, you know, Sorry about how I girls ran your face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't just turn it off when the camera stopped because they were really there. Right. I, I, don't, I, didn't like to keep, I don't like to have an atmosphere where it becomes jovial um, because filmmaking is very serious. Mm. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it, it was important, I think, from, from because I act, I, it, it, I figured for me as an actor, I liked the idea of being able to stay in something. So with that, with the reason I wanted to shoot it so intensely was because it allowed Brian and Emmett and, and Kelly and Italian and so forth to stay in this mm -hmm. and, and not lose it. And then it means you can find something because you're, it's there in your belly as opposed to, okay, cut, now we're going to do a close-up on this and you've got to go and find something. And there's nothing more right. frustrating. Mm. So mm. it was to explore that sense of freedom. And did the girls, was it really the girls using the cameras when it's put no, the past between no, them? No, I, I would stand there with the... Um, the camera and then Brendan the sound guy stand behind me and then whoever had the camera I'd basically have them right at the <coughs> side uh -huh. so it meant that I was able to dictate where we're going to move to next so if there's something interesting happening between maybe Brian and, and Siobhan or something and I was kind of on Emmett and, and Natalia it meant I could go okay we're going to go over this way now right. and dictate it and then see what was happening and then at the same time filming this like go this way so it was kind of yeah but you guys as you said you forgot the camera was there for mm. 20 minutes a couple of times I'd be doing the scene and didn't your character's supposed to have the camera, and the next thing you'd be the back of your jacket being pulled, you'd be pulled out of the sink behind the camera. Obviously. Right, because you're walking <laughs> yeah. into your own shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's very, very Or physical. pushed out, even. <laughs> pushed out, like, fuck off. It's not your fucking camera anymore. Get back in. Get back you're in my, my movie. You're my shot here. Go over there. Yeah. So there wasn't a temptation to sort of muscle your way into like another shot. It's like, yeah, yeah, I want to be involved in that bit of rape. No, well, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to hold back. <laughs> it's the way you say it. You sell it so well. Yeah. Nice little bit of rape in the corner there. Mm. We'll have some of that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Exactly. Hey, Brian, I don't know if you're the right person to make that joke. <laughs> it was a tender love scene. It was a tender love scene. Yeah. That, that was actually the, mo that was the most chilled um, scene to shoot, to be honest with you, because it was just... It's all done. It's all done in close-up. You don't see anything. Didn't want to see anything. It's all about mm -hmm. the emotion of, of Natalia and Brian. So you don't actually physically see anything. And the thing about it is, you don't actually really see any violence <coughs> in this film. Um, it's all there and it's all indicated, but you don't physically see blood. I think there's one section mm. that shows some blood just to show how it actually happened. Yeah, when the lad gets his. Yeah, but you don't, you don't actually see him being beaten up. Right. You hear something, but you don't actually physically see it. And same with everything else. So with the rape, for example, it's obviously a very tentative issue, but it needed to be a very strong um, moment for something supernatural to occur. And I figure that's the worst thing that can happen. Is mm -hmm. because of people, and it, we, we shot that, it was very chill, wasn't it? Mm. Sitting there having a smoke and just, wait, yeah. whatever. That's been the most relaxed part we did. The right. Well, yeah, because is there anything we actually had the camera set down on the ground? It's like, okay, cool. Sure, just go for it. Yeah. yeah. We're with the TVs in the background, right? Is it that? Is yeah. That yeah. That yeah, 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 yeah. Got you. So that was the most cinematic scene in it, in terms of actually setting it up mm -hmm. as such. And then, obviously, uh, yeah, you said you, you mentioned uh, Rec was an influence, yeah, particularly, yeah. I think, on the on the sort of act three, you know, when it does yeah. take a sort of supernatural turn. Yeah. How developed is, uh, did you, uh, how far did you develop that sort of actual supernatural story, the mythology behind that? Because, you know, the audience, we, we don't really learn yeah. the roots of it. You see a few glimpses of, uh, you know, the hieroglyphs and the, mm. the, the paintings on the wall sort of suggesting sort of, 
I don't know. Well, well, I think it's open to interpretation, isn't it? It was kind of meant to be. I didn't want to um, uh, delve too deeply in, in, in saying this creature is from this, this is from that. It, it was more... Um, you remember Nosferatu, mm-hmm. and you just see this image. And for me, Nosferatu was incredibly scary. It's me old horror films from the 50s and 60s, because you just see like a shadow on the wall or something, and you don't know what the fuck it is. Right. And that for me was more scary. So I didn't want you to know what it was. Um, and there was, there was a temptation to show more of the creature, because he looked really great. But for me then, I thought, once you know what something is, it's not scary. So I think if you don't know what the hell it is or where it's come from, and then that's like your own fear of, mm-hmm. of the night and ghosts and all that kind of stuff. If you don't, it's when you don't know what it is that it becomes, for me, more horrific. Mm. Which was a shame for Paddy, because it took <laughs> hours and hours and hours and hours yeah. to get into that costume and yeah. makeup and everything else. And, and then you don't really flashes. want to show him. He's wearing a thong the whole thing as well, wasn't he? Yeah. Tiny yeah. little, tiny little thong. It's nice like, little leather yeah. number. So we're going to see a quick flash of your thigh as you go past your Thanks, Patrick. Yeah. Great. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Now, did Owen keep that, that element uh, fairly secretive to you as well? That he didn't go into too much detail about yeah, what yeah. it was going to be? Yeah. No, I, d- I never got to see, or my character never got to see the monster. Mm. But, um, yeah, no, it was... It, was, um, it, it just worked so well, as I was saying. I mean, it's just, I think just the flashes and mm. no close-ups, no, nothing to, to um, indicate to the audience what it could be. Yeah. Right, right. Now, I mean, obviously, your background in acting probably makes you a bit more of a sort of an actor's director, yeah. as you're talking about. Uh, is there anyone? I hope you... so, man. Actor's director. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. So. yeah. Jeez. I mean, is there anyone that you've worked with as an actor that you're like, okay, I love, I love the way that he dealt with me, so I'm going to t- try. Yeah, and my, use my, Mike Figgis, I think, is the one who I, who I just worked with him, and he was great because he understands. He's also acting. He understands allowing the actors to improv mm. to, to within the framework of what you're doing. It's not rigidly you now have to say the word the instead of there, you cannot say I went there instead of saying I had to go there, whatever, you can change just words mm-hmm. and that kind of frees you and it just mm-hmm. liberates you just because you get liberated by grammar and it just liberates you to act and not have to go, fuck, I said that word wrong. Right, right, right. Um, I think that's important. Because sometimes stuff is just, too, if you're not making, if you're making Shakespeare or Aaron Sorkin, then fair enough, you want to hit the exact beats, but yep. otherwise, some things you need to change in the moment. Yeah. So, and that works for you as well, Brian? Yeah, yeah. Well, absolutely. It gives, you, it gives you so much more freedom. Right, because you're not locked into yeah, just to the right dialogue. Or... Yeah, because I, did, I didn't write the word content in this film at all, and Brian uses it quite extensively. <laughs> <laughs> you do realise that, right? Well, I just wanted to make sure I've got an 18 certificate. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> make, just if it's down the door. <laughs> in case it was 12s, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I understand. You, you filmed this in 2010, was it? Yeah, it was filmed about 24 months ago, but it took a while to... Um, to yeah, finish so it and do post and stuff. Okay, can you yeah, can you talk a little bit about sort of what's been going on in the last sort of two years since, since um, the shoot? Because after we finished it, um, I, I I couldn't I couldn't really work on it for about nine months um, because I was I was filming and I was in LA and then uh, it took a while to go back and get the right score done. I had to get a guy to do the score, and then we had to do a few pickup stuff, mm-hmm. and that just took a while to organise. So it was one of those things. And then it was actually ready to go last summer, but these things take a while to then send it to people and, and then so forth, you know. And then we really wanted to get into Fright Fest. So right. we kind of were waiting to see could we get in there and thankfully they very happily chose it. So is this going to be the first ever screening for like a, a, a yeah. real audience yeah. today? Yeah. How are you feeling about that? Uh, it's way too early to get drunk, isn't it? Which is a massive shame. Mm. It's not even noon. So yeah, you can do that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just get frowned upon. <laughs> So over how much time did you, was the was the shoot? Six days. Wow. Five okay. five yeah. days, and then we did one pickup day, which is <coughs> to shoot the the conventional stuff around the top and the tail of the film. Right, but right, okay. But five days was the actual. Wait, is that you? Yeah. That, that is yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what happened was, I mean, because Emer I- is a DP, and she just DP my last film, and um, you know, do you want to come say hi, Emer? Okay. I'll come <laughs> <and> <laughs> well, what happened was, I because I, I was DPing oh. it, and then I had this guy who then. Three days before we were shooting it, got got a really big job, and Emer and Dave, there's another DP, were both doing camera assistant and the lighting for me. And I was like, well, fuck it, you guys may, may as well shoot it. I'll just act in it. Just makes life easier. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. Just yeah, because they're great, so it just made more sense. Absolutely. So it was a circumstantial thing. It wasn't like oh, I want to put myself in my film. I really didn't want to be in it. Right. Um, but it just kind of happened. So. Oh well, it works. I mean, it, it you know it even further disorientates the audience as to where <laughs> where the hell is going to go towards the mm, end yeah. and who's going to be who's going to be left. Yeah. You know? Because uh, yeah, I don't think at any point you have a clear idea of which of the girls. I mean, you assume just through the you know the 
the genre itself. That, yeah. Okay, one of these girls is probably going to get out alive. Yeah. But uh, the minute you start pegging which one it is, almost every single time they're like, oh, whoops. It's no. interesting. I never thought that. So you didn't really know who's going to survive. No, I didn't. I oh, didn't. Yeah, that's quite cool. I mean, I'm not overly familiar with the with the actresses. Yeah. But I understand the the the, the, the blonde girl was probably yeah. the the biggest name, right? Yeah. So you probably thought she. Yeah, she was in. So I thought, yeah. okay, it's probably going to be her because she was probably the most expensive. So, yeah. <laughs> she's most high maintenance in the same joke. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I killed her off. I was like, oh fuck, we've had her for four days. Quick, kill her. Kill her. Kill her. Kill her. Kill her. No, I'm joking. No, Teresa's sweet, sweetheart. <laughs> and then yeah, once you think you got it pegged, and then uh, and then you turn up at the end and uh, oh, yeah. start waking them up. You know? Yeah, and you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thought that'd be kind of interesting because you you don't know where the, I. Part of it was again with the fan footage thing. Why I wanted to do that was because you didn't know where people had disappeared to. Mm-hmm. I didn't want you to show the fact. Okay, Brian's been pulled off here. We're going to show him hanging from a ceiling, ripped to shreds. That wasn't interesting. It's like well, you don't know where he's gone, and it meant then uh, is who's going to turn up around the corner who's going to come back and, and then so when we went back in to do the the, the the dovetail the end of the film I was like right who do I want to be who's been found here now and it kind of made it more interesting you don't know where people have gone to as opposed to in horror films this person now dead and you've seen them dead I thought sure. it was interesting to, to not know yeah right no it certainly sort of uh, adds that to, the, to that last act where yeah. it's like it could be the, the creature it could be one of the guys it could be one of the girls you, you, know, mm, you yeah. never know who's going to be there. yeah 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 no I think it works a treat mm. Ha 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 ha!